Well, it's been a little bit of an absence for me since I posted my last uh, playthrough video. I've got a little busy. It's been a, oh man, I think it's almost been a couple of months since I posted it. Um, as you can see, the game is still on the table, thanks to the good graces of my girlfriend. But we're about to have some company in the next uh, couple of days, so I, I've been given the orders to uh, get the game off the table. So it's time to actually put this uh, scenario to bed and finish it off. We're very close, if you remember from last time. Uh, we're on the next to last turn, 17 a.m. turn, um, as you can see there. Uh, the weather is clear for this turn. Uh, once again, a very good boon for the Germans because they are still very much trapped in... Um, uh, what am I even playing with? <laughs> That's how bad it's gotten. I've basically forgotten even the main town that we're actually um, playing for. It's a Sulzi. What am I forgetting about that? The Battle of Sulzi. Oh, that's, that's shockingly embarrassing. Um, as you can see, the German units in Sulzi, of course, took quite a pounding from the 21st tanks and 70th uh, order of rifles, the Lenin order of rifles, I'm totally getting that name wrong, the 70th. Um, and their position is perilous, and had there been a rain turn, uh, they would not have been able to get supply, but because it was clear and they still hold the airfield here very tenuously, they were able to get some supply. There are some issues here though, um, I believe one of these stacks is not doing so well towards the bottom. Um, you know, this doesn't have a lot left, so they're running out of steam here. And uh, But they did get three victory points for holding at that turn, that does bring them up to 14. And they only need, I believe, yeah, tw wait, 28 or greater, so I need to get 14 more points. That might be kind of difficult, but I don't know. I think I can do it if I can hold on to some cities and uh, also kill some more artillery units. Uh, nothing really of consequence to note. Uh, we still have this issue down here with the roadblock. Um, they got this one, they've been up here, and I've got sort of this uh, ambling group of motorcycle infantry and a tank sort of uh, hoping to get this artillery and snipe some VP points because the Germans desperately need to get as many VP points as they can. Hopefully we can hold this now um, for two more turns and get hopefully another 6 VP out of that. That's very essential. And of course up here at Gordichier, uh, our forces are poised to make a nice attack there because uh, the disrupted units you see there failed their um, ER check and so they remain disrupted. That means they're going to have a total ER of about two. Every unit there is reduced and it's, it's poor quality infantry. So I'm going to get quite the advantage uh, attacking them even though I can only muster 2 to 3 to 1 assault odds. And they actually have a little bit of artillery back here that can help out, but um, uh, it's only only just enough to help out once each round. There's only eight defense points there. So as we get to that attack, actually the first one's up, I drew third motorized. So we will be doing this attack very quickly um, just because I need to actually get processing through here. And if I can take Gordichie, that's going to greatly help the German efforts in terms of VP totals. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start processing this attack. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to set it up. And when we come back, we'll do... Um, the Battle of Gordicia. All right, as you can see, I've already calculated some of the values for units around here for their strengths. So this attacking stack has 12, this has nine, and this has 18. It also contains the armored unit that allows us to uh, get mobile combat, but of course, we're attacking a strong point here. You can't see it, I've removed the red marker, but that means we have to use assault combat. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make this turn an assault turn because uh, we're just going to be using assault and we don't want to get our DRMs for having a mobile turn and conducting assault because there's, there's really no benefit. We don't need to move our guys. So there's no reason to use the full mobile turn to get the full MA allowance. Uh, we're right up against it, right? So this is pretty much how it's been the last few turns. It's been kind of a grind as the front has stabilized here, but I think we're about to get a breakthrough. I think this turn we're really going to see some damage done here. So let's go ahead and total up. First off, we should look here and say, well, what can these units do? Um, there's no combat reaction possible because there's no red box movement uh, 237 unit around. Um, there is no potential. They could do a combat refusal, so they can kind of or do no retreat and sort of say, you know, I'm not going to. I, I'm sorry, they can't do a combat refusal because they they're not red box, so they can't run away from this battle, and they wouldn't want to anyway because they want to hold this city for VP purposes. Although it's it's really costing them dearly. Um, but they can do a no retreat because they do have an HQ unit, I believe, in this stack, and I think they still have three steps. Hold on, I'm taking this off camera for a second. One, two. Yes, they still just barely have three steps of strength. They have four actually total in this stack, and they have an HQ unit. So that means it automatically passes the uh, no retreat. We don't need to make an ER check because the HQ unit uh, just automatically inspires the units not to go anywhere. 
So we're going to throw that down there. Let's go ahead and start making a little list of uh, the modifiers over here. Um, yeah. So we've got, well, first off, the lead unit's going to be this motorcycle guy, and the lead unit for the stack in here is going to be, oh man, I just don't really want to lose those guys. He's actually a good defensive unit. Yeah, it's going to be this anti-tank, um, mainly because it has two steps, and uh, I need to not just lose full infantry here. I'd like to sort of hold them out. And plus, it's all the same uh, ER ratings, as you can see. They're all fours. The infantry there is a four, and so it's an anti-tank. So there's really no no difference, really, I guess. And now I made a huge mess. There we go. In which unit I choose to be a lead, but uh, it's going to be that four, and I'm going to choose the motorcycle here. Uh, because this whole stack is disrupted, it's minus two ER. So they automatically have a two. The Germans have a seven. That's a minus uh, five sw uh, swing. So that's ER. But then you get plus one for a strong point, plus one for no retreat. Um, I think, do I get a combined arms bonus? You can tell it's been a while. Uh, nope, can't because you got strong points. So I don't get a combined arms bonus. Um, and let's see if I actually want to use any airplanes on this battle. It is clear weather that is going to help uh, the Soviets. They have far more air power to utilize. Um, this is getting kind of uh, testy here. So they're actually going to bring in their six, and I think they're also going to bring in a five. They're going to bring it up to two there. The Germans don't want to necessarily be caught flat-footed, but they're also hurting in Sultsy, and there really isn't a lot of time or availability for air power, and there's just other things that need to be attacked. So they're actually not going to put any air power forward. Um, it's more important for the artillery here for the for the Soviet players, but he's not going to spend command points with his HQ on these on these air rules. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a straight up a five and a six roll. There's no modifiers because it's it's not mobile combat. So we'll go ahead and make the six the red die and this other die the other one. Let's see what we got. All right, so the six passes, it gets a one. Uh, the other one did not, it rolled an eight, so it'll go away. So that's another DRM that's gonna help them out. Plus one uh, close air support. And uh, that gives us a total DRMs of minus two. Okay. So now we calculate the defense. Uh, clearly they're going to use artillery because they want to try to hold this spot. And as you can see over there, we kind of got this nice six artillery waiting. So we're going to activate this guy. We're going to roll. Uh, the DRMs, there are no applicable DRMs, although I am going to use my HQ here. Oh wait, he's out there. He's fighting probably a little lower down the stack, of course. Yeah, and he has, as just showed you, I'm doing this off camera, he has one. So we're going to use that one point on our roll here. Um, there's no other modifiers that I remember that I can think of because it's not woods and it's not a marsh or anything. So we get a minus one to the roll. We need to roll a five or less. We do not pass. We get an eight. That's good enough for half. So he's going to throw three points of a six over. So we're looking at, we'll go back to our little totals here. What are we looking at? We're looking at a, he has 11 defense, and I'm going to be attacking with 12. Oh, actually, I'm going to have some air artillery, I think, to throw in as well. So far, it's like 12, 9, 21, or sorry, 12 and 18 is, uh, that should be easy, 39 total. So I have 39 total. And I'm going to throw in some artillery because defender has to choose first. Uh, as you can see, I could get, let's see, was that 22, 33? So I already have three, but I could get 44 if I had five more. I just don't know if that's really worth me using all of this artillery. I'd rather just save it for maybe a big push through because if I don't even get these rolls, then I'm only gonna get half and it's not gonna be enough. I'd rather just save my artillery. So we'll just take those odds and that's gonna be three to one assault odds with a minus two to the roll. Okay, so we actually got all that figured out. We've done all of our modifiers. Uh, let's go ahead and do the final roll here. We're doing the Germans attacking on a three to one table and with a minus two DRM. And the roll is a five, so five minus two is three. A three on the three to one table is defender retreat, disrupted, and armor attrition. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. So we automatically know the defender suffers a step loss because they had a no retreat. So this guy takes a step loss. Not as, not as dramatic as we were hoping. They stay disrupted, but there's an armor attrition roll. So we know automatically that these two planes could bite it. So we're going to roll for these planes real quick. Looking for a six and a five. 
the red plane or the six plane lives and the five plane actually bites the dust. That kind of helps out the Germans a little bit. The one thing I need to look up though about armor attrition is if I'm going to lose my armor unit that I attacked with in that stack. So let me take a look. If the attacking force has armor steps and the defender has an armor or red defense value. Um, see, that's the thing. I don't think they have a red defense value. I kind of am surprised the strong points don't cause armor attrition. But yeah, there's no red defense values there. So I, I saved. I don't have to take a I have to take a loss, thank goodness, for that. All right, otherwise I would have lost that armored unit and that would have been devastating to third motorized because even if they could have broken through, they would have been severely hampered and not be able to conduct mobile combats. So that attack wasn't really that great, but we did have them eat up some of their artillery. I was really kind of hoping to get more losses so they could stop doing no retreats because um, they still have three steps, so they can still do no retreat next turn. So I wasn't really able to get anything I needed done uh, I mean, I did take a step away. It's not, it's not the end of the world, but I really wanted to break through. I really want those points. Okay, so let's back up. Sorry, I've got some allergies going on. You hear me sniffing a lot. It's been one of those, uh, it's been really dry in Portland, and it's let off a lot of uh, pollen. It's really messing with me here. Okay, so the Soviets. Uh, that's the other thing I didn't mention. The Germans, of course, retained initiative. They have won initiative every round this game. Um... Some of it's because the Soviets have passed a lot, but some of it's just really bad rules, so can't really help that. Okay, we've got the activate any formation marker coming right off the bat. So I'll need to take a look at the board and figure out what the hell I want to activate, because that's a very potent ship to draw right off the bat. Uh, and it may be something here around Solzy, because I really want to keep uh, hammering this position. Uh, although up there in Gordishi, I might need to send some reinforcements or try to get something in there. I don't know. I'm going to take a look at it. So I'm going to take a look at the board. When I come back, we'll actually figure out who the uh, Soviets are going to use their activating information marker for. All right. The choice, there was there was a potential chance I could have used the 180th down south uh, to go snipe a SS artillery unit, which would have been satisfying. Um, it would have gotten me a VP. But, uh, or maybe it wouldn't. I forget the Soviets. I don't think the Soviets get VPs. Um, they might have lost the Germans one. I don't know. But ultimately, that's not, I, I don't need to be hammering that. Um, that, that, will, that would be nice because that point is already sort of a stalemate in the south. I need to be utilizing my 70th here and just continue to hammer on this point. It's weak. The stack only has 12 defense points and uh, we can bring quite a lot to bear using the assault and uh, letting adjacent units participate in that assault, right? So we're only one space away, so everybody can make it because it's, uh, it's only, I believe, two. It's like one and two for entering a zone of control. So every unit can make it. And what we're going to do is we're going to slide um, these guys over. And then these guys are going to come down, just like we did last time. I think I must have gotten a retreat or something. I don't know. Uh, this guy can't join in. It's super stacked all around. So we're going to be attacking with those four units because they're adjacent and it's an assault, so they can participate. Um, oh, you know what I did not do in that last battle and I totally forgot was combat coordination because I'm slow. I'm pretty sure if you do an assault, though, you don't need to do combat coordination if everybody is in the same formation. Um, yeah, so if they're all attacking in the same formation, that won't be the same case here. So it's a good thing I remember that because we're going to have to definitely do a combat coordination roll. Um, and that's okay. I mean, that's just that's okay with me. So what we'll do is we'll attack with this. Uh, so we ought to, if we look over here, I've sort of uh, written out here, we have 59 attack points to 12 defense points. Uh, the Germans there, let's see, can they, they do have an HQ and they do have more than three steps of strength. So they can automatically pass and get a no retreat. So I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to start off and say, uh, well, first they're going to do some reaction movements because I think they can take some guys out of here and help, help bolster. It's going to really weaken this area and this is the VP hex, but currently only this, only this hex can attack it. And if I brought someone here, yeah, they could come across too, but then they'd be leaving this open, and, and it's going to be—it's hard for the uh, Soviet spring forces down south like that. That's why I've been focusing on the airfield. And also, if I can take it, then they'll just be out of supply uh, in a very bad way. So there are a couple units in this stack that can react, move over because they have red box movement, and German units, unlike their Soviet counterparts, can use reaction movement when in an enemy zone of control. So we do this on a case by case basis. I think I'm just going to bring this guy over. Um, 
Hopefully that's enough spoiler. I don't really want to keep bringing other units over because I don't want to deplete the stack too much. This might be foolhardy. I should probably be throwing everything I can into this and hoping it'll hold. The only problem is that I can only bring in three additional stacking, or two stacking points. I think I have three, six, yeah, that's seven. So I can actually bring one in, so that makes that whole argument moot anyway. So let's roll an ER check. It's just a straight up check, there's no modifiers. We could use HQ points on this. Uh, and honestly, I probably should, but I also need to... Uh, I don't really need to do anything, so yeah, we'll go ahead and spend two on this. That seems kind of wasteful, but I really need that unit over there. So we're going to spend that. I'd have to roll pretty ridiculously high to not get this guy in. So let's see what we get. Wow. Yeah. Glad th good thing I used it because it's 7 minus 2 is a 5. And uh, that uh, gives me some breathing room to get him over, but not much. So he'll join over there. A uh, reminder, reaction movement gives you half your movement, and uh, you have to be within two hexes of the uh, hex being attacked. And you have to be the same formation, too. So all that works out, but he goes over there. So they're also going to do that no retreat. So that's going to not only give them a die roll modifier, but it's going to increase their defense to 15. So that brings our odds, because I have no artillery I can... Well, actually, do I do have artillery? I think I do actually right here, don't I? I do have 10 points of artillery I could bring to bear... Um, let's see, that's 15, 30, 45, uh, yeah, that would be worth it. So I think I'm going to bring one artillery unit in because it'll give me a shift if I get even one more point. So what we'll do is, it is within four hexes of an HQ, so we're going to use, let's use this five. And we'll just go ahead and roll it because I just need the one point, so I don't need to use any command points on it. Um, there's no DRMs because it's just a straight up assault. Oh, and I get it anyway, so I got a four, no DRMs, that's pretty That's pretty sweet. So what did that give me? What did I say, four there? So that boosts my total up to 63. So that gives me, what, four to one odds. Okay, so if we look at some of the DRMs, we have plus one for no retreat. Um, we actually do get a combined arms bonus because there are armored units actually attacking, so that's minus one combined arms bonus. Oh, I didn't even throw any airplanes in. Totally, totally did not do that. Still time to do that, it's not a big deal, so I think I will. So the Germans, or the Soviets, because it's, uh, it's clear weather, but these are crappy planes, ugh. So the, so the Germans are going to throw in a five, and I think the Soviets will just go ahead and throw in a four just to have some token air forces. So let's go ahead and see who gets what. The Germans actually get their plane, and the Soviets do not. So that was very close for the Soviet role, so that actually helps the Germans out a lot. Um, it's plus one. Uh, oops, yeah, we got close air support. Yeah. All right, plus one close air support. And uh, so there we go, that's all that's going to be. So if we add up these DRMs, we see we get plus one, minus one, and a plus one. So it's actually going to be a total of plus one to the roll. Um, is there any other? Oh, we got to do combat coordination. Duh. So my lead unit is going to be um, this guy, this six. And we actually will use um, two HQ points on that. It's kind of important, I get this. So what are my modifiers? I automatically lose two, but I also gain one because more than three hexes are attacking. Uh, let me make sure I got that right. Yep. And it's not in the mobile sequence. So we get a minus one total to our roll, plus one for more than three hexes, minus two for the command points I've used. So minus one total, we're looking to get under six, and we do. All right, sweet. So we got the four, it means we got the combat coordination roll. So we don't suffer any other ill effects. We stick with the plus one DRM. Um, all right, so we got everything together, four to one odds. It is, uh, actually it's a, an assault because I can't use mobile, it has to be assault here. Because I made an assault attack, right? Uh, so here we go, we're gonna roll four to one on assault plus one. Oh, that's very bad for Germans, a one. So that's a two. A two on a four to one assault is not good for them. Defender two retreats. So these are three step losses, this is this is very bad. So, oh, I didn't even mean, oh, we didn't even do ER differential, did we? I'm really out of it right now. Um, we would have used this guy, though. He's totally expendable, and I don't want to lose my infantry, and I believe he has two steps, so 
he would have been there, there would have been no ER differential that actually could have possibly helped the Germans, but it did not. Um, so that means we take three steps total. It has to come, this guy takes the first step, and then other units have to take a step loss. So that's one step loss. I don't really want you to lose a tank. Ugh, I don't want to lose that. Ugh, or that, so it is going to be a tank. Uh, let me double check something. I don't know if I have everybody has to take a loss before others do. So let me take a look at the rules real quick while I uh, make sure I get this correct. Okay, a quick look at the rules revealed that we don't have to have everything lose a step before you have other people lose steps. You know, some games make you take one step away from everybody in a stack before you can apply additional step losses. So that's actually good for me here. I'm going to take three step losses, which means this guy's going to go away. He gets one, two, so he's out. And as much as it pains me, this Panzer unit's going to die. It's going to cost me a VP, but it's I can't lose these infantry. I mean, they're they're the defense. Um, gonna have to contemplate doing something here. I can't really break out because I'm totally surrounded. Uh, I could maybe run away. Um, I might maybe reconsolidate and figure out what I want to do here. This is pretty devastating there. So we're gonna lose a VP point. Go down to thirteen. <laughs> There was no armor attrition, so that's okay. These are flown and they're done. And, uh, oof, looking even worse over here. And of course you lose the no retreat because we didn't, uh, didn't retreat. Or we actually had taxi, always lose the marker there. So, oof, bummer, looking, looking real desperate there. I was kind of hoping for high rolls. Uh, definitely did not get that. The Germans definitely are beginning to buckle. All right, so let's see what the uh, next Soviet activation will be. Or the next German, I'm sorry. Oh, it's our friends, the SS. Well, not my friends. Uh, they're probably nobody's friends anymore. So let's take a look and see what the... Uh, there's some new SS units that did come on, so let's see if they can actually do anything. I'm skeptical about their ability to alter what's going on down here. Um, I've just mismanaged this battle so, so badly. Um, and I might abandon these, these people right here and just try to go straight up there and try to take Sydney so I can get some VP points. So when I come back, I'll think about what I'm going to do with the... Uh, SS that are patiently waiting down here. Okay, so the thing about the, the using the SS is that I really, since I've been, as I mentioned before, I've been so badly managing attacking this position, it's it's kind of silly. And honestly, with only two turns to go and the way the supply rules work, I should almost just cut and run and try to go get the VP spot up here. But um, because that seems, you know, because this is where you get VP points at the end. If I can knock these guys out and they're out of supply and they're on a strong point, but, uh, you know, they're out of supply, which is huge. Uh, I could probably put them back into supply fairly easily, but, you know, at the same time, whatever. But that seems very gamey to me to utilize the fact there's only two turns and I have supply rules are going to let me just zoom away and not worry about this threat that clearly I was so worried about because I couldn't, they would cut supply if I left this point. So, you know, as much as I should probably just, in game terms, move on and take on the VP Hex, um, you know, I'm not going to do that here because this is the whole point of this attack and it would be kind of silly to have all this thing and be like, well, cut and run, which I mean is appropriate sometimes, but here it's just the fact that I've not been managing it well and I haven't been uh, using the combined formations rule here with the wonderful 8th Panzer tanks that are so generous and like very nice and full strength and oh my god, back at, you know, <laughs> at Soltsy, they just are having weakened tanks being destroyed all the time, and here we have fresh tanks that are literally doing almost nothing. That whole speech is to say, I'm going to literally pass and wait till I can draw an 8th Panzer chit so that I can try to do a combined formations here, because I have to do a combined attack on this stack, because I can use a mobile attack on it. Doing so will hopefully let me get advantageous attack, push them aside, produce losses, help me get some sort of traction going here. Um, it's almost a little too little too late, but of course this turned out to get new uh, SS units, so there are at least seven more points of damage potentially coming in. And hopefully if I get a good combined activation, then I'll finally be able to utilize some of these army units that I've just been so poorly using. So I have the rocket unit down here, I have the like engineering guys right there, and he's even motorized. I mean, just good stuff that's just been put to such poor, poor use. I've done such a terrible job. So we're going to pass, and we're going to give the Soviets an... Uh, DRM bonus, they may potentially win uh, initiative next turn, that has yet to be seen. Uh, that would be amazing if they didn't. And instead what we did is we drew uh, next chit and it was the 237 as you can see down there. 
So here's the deal with the 237th. Let's see now. They just suffered a huge uh, devastating loss in attack in that stack, right? It's disrupted, it's not doing well, it has a strong point, that's pretty much its only thing going for it. However, uh, there's no other 237 units I can bring in that will be able to even uh, improve the defensive value of the stack. Like, I looked it over, and literally I'm holding guys like, well, that HQ is kind of for free, right? But even this guy's a two, but he has two defense value. I have nothing that's surviving that has more than two defense value. Um, so I can't even bring units in that are going to uh, bolster the defense of that stack and not violate the stacking limit of nine points. I could do the same thing here and pass and hope to get a combined formation with the 202 and do some sort of complicated swap out where I bring these guys out and bring these guys in. But even then, I'm still only going to be able to bring in two, four, six, X, um, eight, you know, seven. So I'm still getting around the seven, eight points. It would be barely better than what it is now, and I wouldn't be able to use the artillery that I still have in reserve to help bolster the defense there. Um, they still have enough strength points or step lock or steps, I should say, to do a no retreat one more time. So I'm just going to hold out with them there, and instead, uh, what I'm going to have them do is just do uh, an assault turn because I want them to start building a strong point um, here. And the reason I do that is there's an artillery or an infantry unit, the 237, hanging out there, right? He's going to start building a strong point because it almost seems inevitable that this is going to be lost. And I just don't want them, uh, by them I mean the Germans, to uh, press through and then uh, grab some potentially very tasty VP hexes back there that could almost guarantee their win. Uh, it's still in the air if I can do it. I still need to kill more tanks, and if I can take Solzy, that'll pretty much deny the fact that the Germans can win. If they can hold Solzy for another turn, uh, it's very possible that they can win. So I, I kind of need to um, at least keep them from having a guaranteed win. So that's why I'm building a strong point there. And there's no reason to attack or do anything because I have no literal power. They're disrupted. Uh, there's nothing I can do. Uh, I could bring these guys up and sort of form another line. Uh, I think this is going to be sufficient right here because they're going to still have to get past this stack and it's fairly formidable and this is the very much like point of last defense, right? So they're holding on the main road. Uh, anyway, so that's what the 237 is going to do. So let's see who comes up next for the Germans. So we've been holding the uh, SS marker, sort of like in the holding spot. Oh, look, okay, it's the 8th Panzer. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to actually do a combined formation here because uh, I could do some stuff over there with the 8th Panzer, but um, really it's the whole thing is I'm trying to coordinate this attack down here, right? That's the... Of course, I accidentally hit a button that turns off the recording as I'm talking and moving the phone. Oh, I got a new phone. That's the reason it's taking a while. I have a new uh, iPhone, so it's it's a little bigger, so it's, it's interesting getting used to it, but um, hopefully it's not too shaky because the stand's a little not used to that big of a phone. Anyway, as I was saying before, I'm going to try to combine formations with this 8th Panzer chip we just drew and the SS1 that we've kept in reserve. So let's take a look at our sheet and uh, a little handy player aid and remind ourselves what combined formations require. Okay, we've got to have an, a, we've got an activation marker in the pool. We did. Um, it can't be deactivate any formation marker. It's not. We have to declare the intent. Uh, see, if you were playing a game, you keep it secret what you keep. Uh, if you're playing face-to-face, -face, you keep it secret what you hold, right? So here I'd reveal it, or reveal one of the two, because you keep a secret what you draw as well. And uh, we turn one of those two up. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll a die, and we're going to add the combination value of the revealed activation marker, plus any leader DRM we want to throw into it, um, which we might actually do, because we kind of want this to work, really, even though that leader's not even close. I, I don't know. Uh, I need to make sure that works with leader. If the result is eight or greater, then they both activate. And if it's less than uh, eight, and they, then only the revealed one you you show activates. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, this is kind of risky. Let me do one check in the rules real quick to make sure that the leaders, actually I'll just do it in the camera because it's a small area in the rules. All right. Leaders. It must be stacked an HQ of the lead unit's formation or an HQ to an aid an air unit. So, yeah, it's stacked. I mean, Manstein is over there. This is Manstein, right? He's over here in Solzy. I mean, this is a little 
This feels a little gamey to me because I dispatched the eighth so far away, and uh, Mancine is hanging out in Sultsy, of course, with uh, over there in, in that emergency supply stack. He's hanging out uh, in Sultsy, so it seems kind of weird that I would use him to do this, but I am going to do that because I do need this to go down. So as I, I even even as I say, I'm not going to use gamey tactics. I'm clearly going to use gaming or gamey logic here uh, to make that work. So yeah, you know, convenience of the game. Means to the player logic, right? So if we were face to face, this would be hidden, and I would suddenly reveal this and say, Eighth Panzer is going to try to combine with this mysterious formation marker, which my opponent would probably guess is the SS. And I would say I'm using my leader DRM plus this. So I get a plus four to my roll, and I need to roll eight or greater. Um, so I take my die out and I roll it. All right, it's totally jumped out of the thing, so we're just going to roll a different die because I don't want to even look for that. And I roll a nine, so I get to combine both formations. Um, there are some restrictions of combining formations in terms of what you can do. Uh, essentially, then you'd flip them over and be like, we're both moving. Um, and what, what essentially happens is that you can, just like in the rules when you declare an assault turn and you can use any adjacent units, um, here I can just move guys next to units and attack, but they... The two formations can't participate in the same sort of hex attack, right? Unless you sort of intermix uh, one stack at least. That's kind of a weird rule, but I, uh, what it means essentially is that I can't just have separate stacks of everybody attacking. Um, one stack has to contain units from both formations to make that work. Um, turns out I will be able to do that because this Panzer stack I have here is, you know, those tanks just only take up one unit. So one, two, it's just a three stack, right? So what I think I'm gonna do is we're going to, well, let's make sure we got this right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that'll work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these guys and they're gonna go here. They're in emergency supply. So we kind of have to make this attack work this turn. Otherwise they're gonna be in uh, a world of hurt next turn. So this guy's gonna get an emergency supply marker there. This unit is going to pay, because this is clear, yeah. It's gonna pay two movement to go there. It's gonna pay two to go in the forest and then one enter the zone of control. So that takes up all his movement, but he gets to come in there. And that's the stack we're gonna have. That's sort of uh, a mix, wait, he's not in emergency supply. This is gonna be my mixed stack, right? The one that's gonna allow me to uh, coordinate my forces on one hex. And this is a mobile turn I'm declaring. Next, we're gonna bring units uh, to bear there, or maybe I'll bring them in here. That's kind of, let's see how I wanna do that. Um, yeah. So what we'll do is we'll move these guys and go, and it'll be one and two and. They'll hang out there. And uh, who else are we gonna bring down? Oh yeah, let's bring this bad boy down, this rocket artillery, because he's only good on the attack, and uh, he's quite potent on the attack, as you can see. Who else can I bring down in this attack? So I have three, six, seven. Let's go ahead and bring this uh, independent artillery down. So it's going to go one, two, um, three, four. Yeah, that works. And this guy can make it too. So they both will join there. Let's go ahead and put them in the bottom. Wait, will they be able to make it? Wait, maybe not go and... So that'd be... Hold on a second, I'm sorry. I want to get this right because I feel kind of dumb when I mess up movement. And it's really essential in this game not to mess up movement. So if they're coming from there... I'm going to take this... Ooh, that's a marsh and woods hex. Ooh, I didn't look at that. They're going to have to go this way. So... <laughs> On camera talking, looking up rules, trailing clear, yep, 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 it's one half, okay. So what it's gonna be is, that's one half, one, yeah, because that's okay, so that becomes two, um, three, yeah, that works, okay, so they clearly can make it, because that only will take up four of the movement. So they're gonna go there, sorry, I should have thought that beforehand. Um, they move there. These guys are going to chill. Maybe they just come together. 
I must be able to do that. They'll come together and move there. I also have a rocket unit here, but I don't, I don't, I can't get him anywhere else. So he's gonna have to hang on the back. So unfortunately, um, I would like to get him involved. Actually, we'll just move him there. He gets a first activation. I probably should be much, much more careful about activate showing the first activation for these guys. So of course their army units they only get two activations uh, per round or turn. Okay. So now I move my guys here. They're going to attack this stack. So what do we have in terms of strength? Well, quite a bit actually. So if we take our little armor units, we know we have three, six, nine, and then five more on top of that is fourteen. This other stack should also be quite formidable. It has an artillery that would be automatically coordinated. It also has that, uh, guys, that's nine. Uh, we also have nine, so it's 18 points there as well. So that's 18 plus 14. I also have additional artillery I could bring to bear. So automatically with my just values here, I have, um, 32. Let's go ahead and write that over here. So we have 32. They don't have any artillery. I believe I sniped it in a previous round. Again, it's been a while. I don't quite remember, but I think I got rid of it that way. Four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. So they have eleven defense. So it's 32 to 11. So I don't quite have three to one odds, so I definitely need to call in some other artillery. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call in uh, this guy, because I only need one, and if he fails, I'll still get it. So I'll take that guy. He's going to do that. It's a six, right? So we do our um, calculations. The DRMs are he's in clear, so there's no DRM there. Uh, it is mobile, so there's a plus one there. So I need to roll a five or less to get this artillery to work. I do roll a five. So the full value is used. So I actually end up getting, what was that, three? So I ended up having like 35. So that's good enough for um, three to one odds. This is going to be a mobile attack because I'm actually able to use, um, in the combined formation, I can use both these guys. And this can be not just an assault, but also a mobile. It's kind of the power of the combined formation. It's harder to pull off, it's harder to get, but then you can also execute a mobile attack with it. So now we can start looking at DRMs. Well, what can he do here? He can't combat react. He can't combat refuse because he doesn't have an HQ unit and uh, he's not on a strong point or anything. So he can't even do that and he has no red box units that can help him out, I don't think, right? No, yeah, there's no red box units that can help him out. So he can't run away, he can't call in artillery and um, he could call in an airstrike, could he? No, he doesn't have an HQ. Oh yeah, I killed the HQ, so he can't even call in, or does he? No, he does. So he could call in an air, and he will call in air. He'll call in two different airs. He's gonna try to do that because he needs, I'm gonna call in one. He needs to save that air for Gordishi. So he's gonna call in one air. The Germans are not going to call in air. They need to save it for their um, attack on Sultzi. They need more defense there. So here comes the Soviets. It's plus one DRM because it's mobile. And they get it, they roll a one. So they get their, automatically we know they're gonna get plus one for close air support. So that plane just kind of comes in and saves the day for that stack there. Um, we know they're also in a village, so it's plus one for a village. And we look at the ER differential, it's not gonna be that great. I think we're gonna put, I hate to use a tank, I don't wanna lose any steps from, uh, the SS uh, infantry units. And engineering units tempting, but it's only a five. And the tanks, I think, are a six, aren't they? Oh, God, the tanks are a six. So we're going to take a risk and we're going to put a tank as a lead unit. It has a six um, ER, so it gives us a minus one because he's going to put that infantry up. So we get a minus one ER bonus and we get a minus one combined arms bonus. So that's going to negate all of those so far because we have to do a combat coordination check. And of course, uh, not everybody's from the same division and we're attacking for more than one hex, it's mobile combat. So we take a look at our lead unit, it's a six, right? Okay, we're just gonna remember that because we got that supply marker. And um, 
we can't use an HQ for any of the values here, so I think what we're going to do instead is we're just going to have to take that 6 and roll it. So it's minus 1 because it's mobile combat. It is... I think that's the only DRM. Let me make sure about that. Yeah, because we're not attacking from three or more hexes, so we don't have to get that DRM. So it's plus one. Oof. Super, super bad. So I get a 10. I forget if that's like a really bad roll or not. Attacker. Oh yeah, I get a plus two. Oh yeah, so I just get a plus two. There's no super adverse effects for rolling a natural 10. I just get the plus two, which sucks. Okay, so I get a plus two to my roll. It's a three to one mobile attack. And um, so that's all the values. So we're actually gonna see what we get here. Three to one with a plus two. I roll a five. So that becomes a seven. Uh, that would have been nice if that wouldn't have stayed how I thought it would be. And that is a defender retreat. So we're going to be able to push him back, but that's really about it. And he has to go back two spaces. And I'll go back here. I guess he'll go back uh, there. Yeah, we'll keep him there in that town. Uh, that means I will bring... This guy to there, and then he will advance here. And this guy will go there. Okay. And that'll be what I do. Well, actually, if I do that, then he can just come up here and attack. No kidding. Yeah, we'll just advance there, and then this guy will... He could advance and go there. That's kind of weird, though. It's a weird move. But it keeps him from... It will let him... Yeah, so we'll do that, so we'll keep him from uh, coming up that way, which is fine. Okay, so that's fine. He got his plane. It's no armor attrition. We're okay there. Um, unfortunately, that does use that artillery... He could have gotten supplied that way. What was I thinking? I don't know what I was thinking there. Anyway, that was kind of dumb of me to think that way. Okay, so they're fired. They're going there, and he goes there, right? Okay, so because we've also combined the formation, we have to do the other moves we want to do for the uh, various guys. And uh, we're going to definitely take this 8th Panzer, and he's going to come snipe this guy. Uh, because they have seven and he has six. So we're going to go one, two, uh, and three, and, and then an attack there. Actually, I can even overrun that guy. And I think I actually will do that. Because I'm getting what? Let me double... Does he have to? If he's the only unit... Oh, I keep forgetting this rule of artillery. Or if they're the only unit, do they get to use... Um, their defense. Um, I could do overrun. So ten point four. Let me look at some. I'm sorry. Let me take a break here. I'll come right back. So yeah, I don't know why it took me so long to read that, but yeah, a defending lone artillery unit uses its defense strength, not its support strength. So this is going to be a 4 to 1 mobile attack that's an overrun. Um, so like we don't have to calculate, well we do calculate DRMs I guess, there's no DRMs there. I get a combined arms bonus because I believe I put that I do, don't I? Uh, I have to force at least one armored unit and a motorcycle, yep, so there we go. So I get a minus one, my ER differential, I'm going to use my motorcycle, is also minus one, so it's minus two total ER. I could bring in planes, I'm not going to. Uh, the Soviet player, of course, cannot do any of that. He sort of just has to suffer. He's not very well equipped to deal with overrun situations, uh, training, and so forth. So we're going to do a four to one attack with a minus two. Uh, no coordination rolls necessary. 
So rolling. Oh, and I roll a one, so that's automatically bully, as Teddy Roosevelt would say. Um, that's a defender three retreat. Yeah, totally dead. It gets me a victory point, which I needed after losing the one in the tank. So the reason I wrote this over here is 5.5 .5 movement allowance used so far to get there. Um, it means I could go there. I don't really know if there's a point. Um, it might even be more advantageous for me just to hang down here and get closer to the battle um, over there. Because clearly I'm going to need even those four points could be very valuable uh, attacking down here. And I think that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to come back here and... Uh, just let them chill. Because uh, I'm cutting off supply to these units up here, so that's no big deal. And uh, I guess I'm technically, oh, these guys still have a supply line. Oh yeah, because they can kind of like wrap around here and get it. Because of the, oh wait, I'm not even showing yet. And so let's see, because of the weird like trace supply rules. Um, I, let me put that back. These units essentially, you're going to be hard pressed to be out of supply, especially the top ones. These guys might start being out of supply, but because I can trace back to here, like, yeah, it's, it's it's more difficult, especially when there's not a rain turn. If there's a rain turn, all those marshes make it uh, more difficult. But that's not the way it is. So anyway, um, now I have to think about what I want to do here. Honestly, it's not good. <laughs> I've lost so many units that now I have to contemplate um, really reinforcing this stack. And unfortunately, it's just a lot of weakened uh, infantry. So I have to look at this stack and say, what do we got in here? We got some of those guys. And there's some totally out of supply guys. Oh, man. And that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to take these two guys. They're going to come into here. And then these two fresh artillery units, or infantry units, are going to pop in here. We're also going to pop this guy over it as well. And then we're going to do the unthinkable and bring this guy over as well. Actually, we're going to bring... Oh, man, sorry. Yeah, we'll bring this guy over, so is that going to work? Yeah. Well, that's made the stack completely weak. This one right there. It's significantly weak in this stack. And I'm just making a mess. Problem. See, like I said... People are watching this and they're like, he's fumbling so much with the counters. And the truth is, is that I should just be using like those force markers and it would just make it so much easier. But I'm not doing that for the sake of everybody can see what I have on the board and my OCD nest is sometimes gets the best of me. Um, okay, so we've rejiggered those stacks. So now we have a much better defensive force holding the airfield because the airfield is what keeps us in supply here. And uh, it's also the most uh, open space. Uh, so that's going to have to happen there. I can't build a strong point because that was a mobile attack. I would love to, but that's just not going to happen. So now we have significant defenses here. 7, 14, we know that's a double, 16, um, now 19 points. So now the Soviets are going to have to really think, okay, we took a lot, we battered their force pretty well, but now they've just shifted fresh troops into the airfield. Should we start moving around and attack the weakened stack here or make a sortie on this very weakened, and that is the VP Hex, uh, Hex you know, stack there. Lots to think about. Okay. Um, oh, what adult I am. I didn't even move these units down here. And I need to do that, so I'm kind of adultish. Probably could have even gotten them on the fight, so that was probably a little dumb not to do that. Um, regardless, we'll go ahead and move them up because it was a mobile turn and we just need to do that, so let's see. We'll do and one and two. Uh, the best he could have done was um, gotten here. Yeah, still could have been part of the attack, though. And then we'll go ahead and do that as well with this guy. He'll just come here. Or is it smart to go that way? And one, and two, and five, and... No, because these guys can all shift over and it'll be fine. Okay, yeah, he'll, he'll hold that spot there. That's totally fine. Okay, sorry, that was weird. Okay, I should have shipped this guy more centered. I get kind of into my movements and I forget. Uh, probably should be a little more careful thinking about how I'm moving these guys considering how few turns are left, but honestly, uh, it's getting towards the end, so I'm just sort of moving through the turns because the real action's not there. The real action is, of course, here. 
and uh, there. So let's go ahead and just keep our camera on the on action there. And uh, let's see who's next. We get a combined formation there, so that means it is the Soviets' turn. The 183rd. That's actually not too hard. Um, they're right there, and they did lose their, sadly, they lost their artillery unit. That is kind of an unfortunate loss for them. Uh, but what I think we're going to do instead is I'm going to move these guys and go, even though they're emergency supply, I'm going to go and one. We're going to hold this spot here. Because that way, when these guys, if they do get the inkling to move up, it's one more set of units we have to go through before they get the victory point hex, which is uh, this strong point here in Sydney. That should be Sydney. Yeah, that's Sydney. So making it just more difficult for the Germans to even try to secure that city. Um, I guess I could try to build, I could have done that. Could I not have done that? No, because you have to begin building it. So yeah, they can't build a strong point. I, I would have had to start started that space to do that. So maybe next turn, maybe. I don't know if that's going to be worth it. Um, so there we go there. Let's see who's up now for the Germans. And essentially, if we draw the SS or the 8th Panzer, then we know we're going to try to do um, the same thing again. We're going to try to do combined formations. And we draw the 3rd Motorized, the only one that would allow us to actually um, not just pass and see what comes up next. So we're going to be back up here for this round two. It actually shouldn't be too hard to do right now because uh, nothing's really changed up there. We we talked at it. We talked it out when we tried to move the 237. Um, they're just going to have to try to take this attack and, and deal with it. None of the values have changed except for the defense of this stack, and I forget if I updated the number or not. So off camera, I'm going to add it up. It's two, four, uh, five, seven. No, so I did update that number. Wow. Smart me. Uh, I'm also watching a baseball game in the room. So I take breaks and I watch baseball. Just got MLB TV. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Go Royals. Uh, lost today, though, sadly. Um, yeah, just getting pounded by the Yankees. Anyway, um... Seven defense there in that stack now, so now we have these three units again attacking. Their values have not changed. Um, there is just enough strength to, to declare a no retreat, which they are going to use again to uh, hopefully great effect. So the same options there. We can't move any guys in. They can't move any guys out. There's no combat reaction. They can't do any of those kind of things. Uh, same kind of values here. So we have, what, 39? Let's go ahead... Oof, let me see if I can back this up just a little observing on. Okay, there we go. It's a little far away, but we can kind of see the action too. So we got 39 and we got 7. So this is getting very bad. <laughs> if we want to add up the uh, modifiers already, we have plus 1, no retreat. Oops, I've got to make sure my drifting will let us get that. Uh, it's a plus 1 village. I wonder if I put that in last time. I might not have, and that would have been... Probably not good for them, but that's a mistake that happens, and we're just going to roll with it. Plus one to retreat, plus one village, um, and plus one for a strong point. Yeah, I'm almost positive I didn't put that plus one now. I'm thinking about it, because that would actually would have been, been good. So we got plus three uh, going there. Uh, we know they're only going to have two ER, because they're going to have to put that uh, infantry unit up. Um, or actually they're all their units are very low quality for ER rating units and I'm going to use that motorcycle guy. So again, I'm going to get uh, 7 minus 2 is a 5, so I'm going to get a minus 5 ER uh, bonus. Um, I don't get the combined arms bonus because I'm attacking a strong point. So this is all going to total out to be, what, uh, minus 2? Now, I am assaulting because it's a strong point, so I have to do a combat coordination check. Otherwise, I would be kind of maybe in a little hot water there. Once again, the Soviets are going to bring in some air, and they're definitely going to bring in both their fours here because this is the last time the third motorized can act in this turn. The Germans are going to bring the full brunt because they really need to crack um, this and hopefully take it this turn, too. So they're going to bring in both of their air forces. So let's start with the Soviet ones. Um, they're both fours, so I'm just going to roll two die. It is no modifiers, because it is not a mobile turn. And they both pass. Oh, would you believe that? 
Soviets with a bit of luck drawing two threes. So now we'll look and see what the um, Germans get. And they get one of them. They get the five plane comes through for them, but that's it. So when we total all that together, that's actually another plus one. So now we're down to, um, go ahead and put that one there, plus one on close air support total. Uh, so now we're down to minus one on our attack here. And it is an assault, and it's 7 to 39, so what is that? 7, 14, 9, 11, 12, 18, 18, 18. So it's 5, 5 to 1. And I don't believe there's any other modifiers. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, so we're good to go. 5 to 1 attack with a minus 1 to the roll. And let's see what we get. Roll a 6, so that's a 5. Roll a 5 to 1. A 5 is a defended retreat with a disrupted... Um, Result. So that means they only lose one step, but they can stop. So this didn't really come out well. And we really needed a better attack than that. Actually, he's just going to throw with that guy. That was the weak unit. So he's out. And they lose the no retreat. And they are disrupted. Man, just uh, not able to get the attack they really needed to happen there. With a five to one, that's really good odds. Um, but honestly, you gotta start rolling a four, or three, or a two there because it, uh, let's see, if I had been able to roll a zero, that would have been defender eliminated. Um, that would have been nice, or a D three R. But it's it's just much tougher on the assault to get really uh, crushing results. Mobile really does it much better. So the power of the strong point holding through and uh, also getting the village. I'm pretty sure I messed up last turn. So. Anyway, still holding out, man, did not take Gordishia this turn. Oh, but there was an armor attrition, so we are going to do rolls on these airplanes. So let's do the two rolls for the Soviet planes. One of them dies, but the other one lives. And then we'll do one for the German planes here. We got a five and a four. The five plane goes down, but the four lives. So the Germans just not doing very well, losing a lot of their air force here. Looking ugh, nasty. Okay, so that's that attack. And unfortunately, Gordishe still in um, Soviet hands and a strong point being built behind. So increasingly looking like we're not gonna be able to get these VP hexes. I thought maybe we just would be able to push through, but it just, just couldn't quite happen. Okay, so let's take a look who's next for the Soviets. And that is going to be the 180th. Now, the 180th is down here, of course. It's when we just pushed aside with our combined attack. Now, the thing about the 180th is they've got to really decide what they want to do here. Um, I mean, I could just sort of keep moving this guy up and presenting more of an issue. Uh, probably a smarter move is to come up here and just cut those lines. Unfortunately, I think this will suck up almost all my movement, even though I am pretty much leg infantry. So, uh, let's see, Marsh, it's a two. So yeah, I mean, that'd still be what? One, two, three. No, I could do that, it'd be four. No, I couldn't do that because that zone of control extends across. Um, if I could have done that, I could have cut off this line. That would actually have been hmm, not that helpful. I could try to do a combined attack here, but again, that's not very helpful because of that, but they could. Is there any way to cut off supply for them? No, because now he's got it going up through here. So he's totally covered on supply. That means that these guys really don't have a ton of options. Um, yeah. Without an HQ, they really can't uh, build strong points. I hope I didn't just build the strong point without an HQ there. But I think what we'll do is just keep them from like zooming around and just put him up there so that way he can't just come around and do weird weird things i don't know i don't really know what to do with these guys they're kind of just there as like placeholders and blockers and they've done more than an effective job so i mean they're pretty much kicking super super ass again because i was so such an incompetent uh, german commander okay we're coming up on the germans and of course we know now that the third motorized is gone that we're going to do a combined activation once again
So we're gonna draw the eighth panzer, but we're gonna pass. We're gonna give our guy, uh, Soviet player, another DRM for, oh, actually we, we did the overrun, so yeah, we should have gotten one for that. So he he's still only gonna have a plus one. Um, I forgot that he would get another one here, right? Cause I'm passing, so he would be at two cause I've already passed once. Um, but since I got that uh, overrun attack, that definitely gave me a minus one modifier because anytime you get to advance more than two hexes, boom, you're good to go. So we're gonna take that guy, we're gonna pass. That means the Soviets have to come up next. And they choose, or they select, the 202. The 202 is up here in the north and in and, uh, and Gordiche, and actually they're, they're just kind of kicking it. They don't really need to do a whole lot. Um, I could add units into that stack, which is probably what I should be doing. And uh, that's probably like the best idea. The stack now is what, down to six, I think. Yeah, it's just got two infantry, so it's six ice. I'm gonna hold one of these guys so I can put in. And here's what I'm gonna do. We'll take the motorcycle guy and he's gonna zoom up. And he can make it because he's got way more than enough movement. And he's not disrupted, so he can actually hang out there. And then I'll take this guy and move him there. So that we can kind of keep our little buffer force here to keep them from zooming around. Which I might have just tried anyway, but again, I couldn't have risked them coming through here anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be the 202's move. Damn, I just did not take Gordishi. I just don't know if we're going to be able to do it. There's just too many guys think up north that's gonna be kind of a bummer um, hmm. anyway so that's that move now we return down to here because of course with the Germans drawing they're going to draw their final um, uh, SS guy and we're gonna really say we reveal this guy so we're going to try to roll now we don't get our DRM for the leader this time because we already used him so it's gonna be a little tougher we're going to roll a six or greater um, and we roll a nine so we get to do it again. We get another combined formation. Uh, I'm like, oh, these guys get to go. Uh, that's super actually big. Um, although it leaves back-to-back -back activations by the um, Soviets. And unfortunately, they I know for a fact that they have the 21st tanks and the 70th in. So that's actually going to be very painful for me over here. But I think I've done the best I can to hold out. Um, that might have been nice to see if I could go last, but I don't think that's going to happen. So here we are again, and I think I'm going to pause because I want to I want to kind of take a look and see if I can do any real damage by adjusting forces over and uh, seeing what my values are without just dawdling on the camera. So when I come back, we'll do this attack uh, down here. Okay, so with my combined formation of the SS and the 8th Panzer, I'm going to attack this strong point, uh, even though it negates my mobile advantage, because the whole reason I didn't decide to do the gaminess and go up here and attack is that the goal was to push these guys back so they couldn't be a threat to do a cutoff, and then hopefully I could divert forces up. I mean, I did this far too late to make this a viable plan, but I still have to kind of consider the fact that if I were a real commander, you know, and I, man, this feels so weird to say, because I never really feel this way when I play a lot of war games about trying to be realistic to the game necessarily. Like, I know a lot of people obviously feel that way about playing a military simulation or a conflict game or war game, whatever you want to call it, uh, especially one that heavily favors recreating historical conditions of a battle it depicts. I know a lot of people want to play in the spirit of that. Um, you know, I've never felt compelled necessarily to do that, but here I am. So I guess I've been playing so long with the scenario that I, I do feel kind of compelled to say, well, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for these units to come out here and then run up there because, you know, other German units are going to come up this road eventually, right? The other echelons are going to come up and they're just going to be, they don't need this roadblock here. You've got to clear it away. So in a sense, I just have to understand that that's probably the thing that would have gone down had there been actual command, they would have been like, oh, this is terrible. We still might even be able to pull out sort of a, a tactical win, but it's definitely not anything better than that. Um, or a marginal, not even a tactical, Oof, might just be a marginal win, so just barely hanging on, which, you know, kind of makes sense for World War II. Uh, anyway, to go, kind of go back here, so what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate our forces on that strong point. So if you remember last turn, we had our wonderful artillery and rockets uh, come into effect. 
they no longer are going to be able to be used because they've been fired. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap them out. They're going to come here. And then we're just going to put them, I think they can just all stack together over here. Two, four, six. Yeah, that'll work. Wait, oh, do I get everybody in this? Two, four, six, eight. Oh, I can only put one there. Oh, we'll just put them here. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fine. And uh, what will happen is in its place, there's still six units there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this motorcycle unit over. He's gonna go there. And he's actually gonna be the lead attack unit now, so we'll bring him over there. And then this guy is gonna join this stack and make a nine stack because we had three Panzer units and all those guys together. So that's gonna be the way that sort of works out. Um, unfortunately, we have no other room to really bring in this rocket unit, which would have been nice. Um, that guy's already been fired. But we do have two other artillery units, so we have artillery from both. Uh, and they can actually combine because they are mixed. That's one thing I might have, I didn't goof last turn, but if you do combine formations, not only do your attacking units have to be mixed if you're gonna use them together on the same target, but the artillery does as well. So the artillery is mixed and we're all good to go. So actually we're gonna just do an attack on this stack. It has 11 defense. Let's go ahead and make our little calculations over here. Okay, and we are attacking with, well there's now what, 10 here? Plus nine, I know that's nine, so that's 19, uh, 21, uh, 26, and then there's a four in there, so it's 30. So we have 30 to 11. We just need to increase that by two points to get our, or three points, I should say, to get us uh, our next odd shift. So we're definitely going to do that. Um, unfortunately, I can't really guarantee, I'm going to use both these, because anyway, it's our last activation, and I need to be able to guarantee that I get these. So I'm going to use, this as my lead artillery unit. It has six uh, ER. Um, do that. Uh, this was an assault turn. All that could have worked out if it was an assault, so I don't get a modifier there. So I'm going to roll a die. I'm going to try to get lower than six. I did not get that. I got an eight. Um, I think that's going to be okay though, because these guys were what, a combined of seven, so that's uh, three totals. That's all I needed to get halved. So I have a 33 now, which equals three to one odds. Um, there's no more air power, air power to be done, used. Uh, they can't combat refuse, they have no HQ, and they can't combat react as they have no red box units. So. Everything's been taken care of there, so we just sort of do the modifiers here. Um, they don't get the modifier for the strong point because I have an engineer attacking, so they don't get that. Um, they let's see if they get any terrain bonuses. Hold on. Nope, there's just forest, and forest does not provide a combat bonus; it only provides an overrun bonus. And uh, so they don't even get that. And uh, we get a combined arms bonus here. So that's minus one for a combined arms bonus. And we're going to use that guy as a lead unit. And they're going to use this infantry. Uh, they'll use this infantry, the 4 4. Um, he's got an ER rating of 5. I have 7. So that's a minus 2 in my favor. We're going to do a combat coordination. Um, well, it's actually an assault, but they're not all from the same division. So we are going to do a combat coordination. I need to find my HQs. Where are you? I've already used your points. No, I didn't think so. So we're going to use one point here for the combat coordination. Um, nobody's disrupted. It's not more than three X's, but it is. Uh, and it's not even a mobile. It's an assault turn. So actually, we just need to roll an eight or less. So let's see if we do that. No, <laughs> I should not have rolled the red die for that, I guess. It was a 10, so it becomes a 9. Uh, that's so upsetting, because that basically means we get plus 2 to our rolls here, so I only get a minus 1. Hmm. That's too bad. That could have been very nice to have a minus 3 on 3 to 1 assault. Okay, so 3 to 1 assault, uh, minus 1. Ugh, a 9. So yeah, German's not getting outstanding rolls here. And that's an attacker retreat. Wait, 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 we get a minus one, so that's actually an eight. Oh, goodness. Attacker two, defender one, disrupted. 
That's awful. <laughs> That's actually so awful. Um, oh, because the combat coordination cost me. So I gotta lose that step. Here goes my great motorcycle. And then I have to lose somebody else. I will take off this engineering unit and that's what we'll do. Oh, God. And then they take one. Yeah, you know, which is nice. But if I hadn't have taken so many losses, that would have been much better. God. Ah, so just not... Not getting, not even getting a retreat result. Wait, did, did they get a retreat? They might have, wait, did I misread that? Three to one, rolled a nine. So that becomes an eight. Uh, defender one disrupted, that's what it was. So that's helpful, but it's almost too little too late. Like, that's actually very helpful, but it's, I just don't think we're going to be able to capitalize on that. Bummer. And then we have these guys. Um... Maybe they need to go help their friends up in up in Solsi. Can they even do that? And one and so and one and it's one and that's crossing a stream. That says and one and two and three and four and five and six and yeah, I couldn't quite get there. <laughs> but he might be able to next turn, and I think that's what we're going to need to do. If only because, uh, although this has now become increasingly difficult without the help of these guys. Uh, what to do, what to do, let's put this on the book. So should I send him up there and try to help him? Because that's pretty awful. Or do I even just try... I did just lose a bunch of attack points here, and that could be recouped by getting those guys back in. Hmm. Yeah. Although that is four defense points. That could be so crucial up here. No, we're going to send them over here because I feel like that's going to become something really important maybe next turn. Um, maybe not, though, but we'll see. And I feel like four additional attack points. Uh, I mean, that is good stuff, but we also have... Some of these things will get recharged. Uh, that just was not as good as we needed it to be. It's kind of in the story of the German attack. I think uh, they just needed it to be a little better, and it just wasn't. Um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe we'll be able to open up a third... Oh, if I had these guys, I could open up maybe a third attack front. Can I even get them back? Hold on. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and... Yeah, they could actually get back in the game. Okay, that's what they're going to do then. We're going to take these guys and we're going to go and one, and two, three, and four, and five, and... We're going to hang out there. Um, because that'll then they'll be able to at least come in, and maybe they'll come here, and these units can come down artillery and just mass there. We can get some get a real attack going. See, now I could have been doing. <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. I was so dumb in this battle. Uh, anyway, <sighs> that's how it goes. Okay, so now we look at Solsi, and we did all the adjustments. Oh man, I got this tripod in a really weird way. We do all the adjustments in last turn. We really reinforce this stack, and let's just make sure we get all of our values okay. Um, so it's three, it's two, four, six, seven. That's not awesome. And then here we just have five, 10, 11, 12, 13, probably 14. So I think what we're going to do is we just got to like shift something over. Let's shift an HQ over. And that'll be it. Let's just keep that that way. 
It's not going to give it a ton of ability to hold out, maybe. And I might feel dumb if I didn't send another one over, but I think that's just what we're going to have to do to keep that all happy. I could try to launch like a counterattack. Um, especially maybe it's no, see, that's it's an 11. What do I have here though? 6, 12, 15. Was it 16, 17, 18? Yeah, I just wouldn't even be able to even get 2 to 1 odds. <laughs> I mean, that's pathetic. I mean, I'd be able to get 18 against 12. Like, yeah, I'd be able to get 3 to 2 or something. Like, uh, I mean, is 3 to 2 odds even worth attacking? I could lose big time on that. Because I could get an attacker retreat. And honestly, his units are pretty high quality. Those are five, so I wouldn't even get an ER bonus necessarily. Uh, and driving an attacker away is not like necessarily that great, but it would be nice to get to maybe make him think a little. Uh, nope, because then he's just if even if I drive him away, he's gonna get activated. He's gonna be able to come back, and it's just not gonna help. So we're just gonna have to hold out there, and not do anything. <coughs> oh well, that's just how that's the situation. That's what we chose to do, and that's what we're going to do. And now we're going to face lots and lots of punishment um, because the Soviets are up, and of course the seventieth will draw. Um, the seventieth can only do a combined uh, assault attack because they don't have the ability to conduct mobile attacks. I used to think that this uh, silhouette unit let it do mobile, but apparently you have to have a red um, armor strength and be silhouetted to be considered armored, and that's what you need for a uh, mobile attack. You need an armored unit. Um, let me get a little better overhead view of this going on here. Now that I say that all, I'm gonna make double check that. I mean, it's been a while since I played, of course, and I looked over the rules again to make sure I wasn't like messing things up. One unit's got to be armored, armored car, or cavalry. Yeah, that's the other thing. Armored cars can actually do it. Can do like mobile attacks, but armored uh, units to be considered armored, you have to have a silhouette, and you have to have red uh, attack strength to be considered armored. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Okay, so enough of that dawdling there, too. So the 70th isn't going to really do much. I mean, it's going to do the same thing, right? It's just going to keep pummeling. Um, this unit, but now we kind of got to think we got to say okay wait a minute They just shifted out a bunch of different defensive units And so now I know it's like 714 Oh my god 19 is that true? Yeah, it's 19 defense points there um, This stack Meanwhile has three four five six seven Is that right? Didn't I just put an extra unit there? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sorry, it's got eight. It might be worth writing down. Eight defense. Oh, God, that guy's got 19 defense. The truth is the airfield is sort of key, but this is the victory hex. 70th, unfortunately, will not be able to make a move on that hex, and this is just a very difficult hex to attack anyway because of the river and the inability to get access. That's one, two, it's 10. So that's 13 defense up here. So st even though we've weakened them and they've had to readjust, still quite a lot of good defensive values around. Oh God. But, but the upside is if I can still take a crack at these new fresh troops in here and somehow score a victory, then I'm doing real serious damage. Should I try to go after the Salty Hex, though? It's only got eight. I can't do a mobile attack, so it's town. I have to do an assault. And I only have 15 there. So I couldn't even do a two to one assault. Although maybe I could, though, right? Because I could go. Well, the problem is, see, if you cross this uh, major river, which you can barely see there, it halves your attack strength, which is a huge, huge bummer. Uh, I could build a bridge unit there, maybe. Let me think about that. Because yeah, I have not been using bridging units very well, and this could be the key breakthrough here. So let me take a break. Let me read the rules about bridging and uh, think about that. 
Okay, so you can put bridging units down, but they can't, and they have to be in command range in HQ, but they can't be in enemy zone of control. So I can't put a bridging unit here and then sort of bring this guy down, that guy over, and then do an attack there. Uh, I just... Oh... I could contemplate doing like a swing around and sort of like trying to get into there, but honestly, I just don't think that's going to really work out. So I think what we're going to have to do instead is just do another straight up direct assault and just continually bring forces to bear. Should I be moving that guy around? No, see, I can't really do that. I mean, I could. He just doesn't move that fast. That's the problem. He's only a five and the guy's a four. Yeah, it's not really worth it. And that's just a tank. No, we're going to. I mean, maybe I should be siphoning forces over and coming around here and trying to do a two-way attack. And I don't know, maybe I should have been thinking about that, but I didn't really have and did it. Obviously, it wasn't opportune until now, and so hopefully I'm trying to just crack this uh, nut that is salty. Um, okay, did I... Oh, I didn't leave an HQ here. That was a mistake. Oh, that was a huge blunder. That was a big blunder, and I'll tell you why, because I should have... Um, <laughs> That doesn't allow me to do no retreats. So we're going to do an attack here. And because it's the 70th, we're going to do an assault. Um, so everybody gets to participate that's adjacent. The odds already calculated over here, 59 to 19. That's 3 to 1 odds. If we look at the DRMs, there actually are none here because it has no strong point, And uh, he can't... Um, I've already got it stacked up to its limits. So nothing else can really move in. Oh, and HQs can't combat react. Otherwise, I would throw one in there, but you can't do that. So we'll try to do a no retreat, and we're going to have to make the lead unit, um, I think with no retreat, see, the lead unit doesn't have to be the lead attacking unit. It has three steps, and oh no, I don't have a strong point or an HQ. So I really goofed up there. I should have left the HQ in. That was quite a mistake, because now I'm open on two retreat results, which is, which is not good. Not good. That was a big blunder. This could actually cost the Germans uh, their position here. That was quite, quite dumb. Uh, not guaranteed, though, but the mobile attack that will come next will probably drive them out. Whew. Okay, so some intense rules coming up here. We got three to one. Uh, the Germans have no artillery they can utilize, and they cannot do a no retreat. Uh, the Soviets don't need to use artillery because they can't get an odd shift with it. And there's no airplanes available to be used. So this is pretty much a straight up combat of three to one. Um, they're going to use that uh, infantry guy as a lead unit. Uh, they're going to use that as their lead unit, uh, the anti-tank unit there. And that's going to give it um, equal ER ratings, so no differential there. Uh, it's just a clear area, so no difference there. And uh, this is a combined arms bonus because there is armor and regular infantry attacking, so... We'll do that, and that's, I think, the only... Uh, oh, we got to do combined um, coordination because we're actually attacking with different people. So we got a six there. Do I have any HQ? No, and that's the only HQ I have for there. So we're going to roll a six. It's going to be a minus one because we're attacking from more than three hexes. So I need to roll actually a five or less. I get a seven. So that's actually a plus two to the roll here. For a failed combat coordination, so it's actually a plus one on my three to one attack. So my three to one attack with a plus one, oof. I roll a six, that becomes a seven. Hmm. Seven on a three to one attack. Attacker one, defender one, and it's armor attrition. Uh, attacker one, defender one. Do I have any red? Oh, I do. Oh, no. Okay, this is, that's interesting. That's actually very interesting. Attacker one, defender one, and it's armor attrition. So because I have a red defensive unit here, he automatically has to take um, the step loss because it's armor attrition. So he automatically kind of dies, right? Um, what that means, though, is that an armor unit that attacked actually has to take the loss. So it's going to be one of these... Uh, one of these tanks, one of these six, three, four tanks. That's so big. So I'll make it the. Let's go ahead and make it this tank. Boom. I believe I get a victory point for that. Let me double check. Yep. So I get plus one for that. All right. And uh, what do we 
we say that was? That was a six. So that became what? Oh no, I have um, a little white roll. I forget what I just said there. I, I did it correctly though. My bad. Tagger one, defender one. Wait, did I? Let me let me review that. Now that I've just done that, of course I moved the die, which was totally stupid. Um, let me redo this and make sure I did use the right roll. No, I rolled X. It's the tagger. I rolled a six plus one. Yeah, it's seven. I did the right one. I was confusing myself there for a second, but of course I was. Should have trusted my intuition. I was right all along. So yeah, it's attacker one, defender one with armor attrition. So we did that properly. Okay, so that's that attack. Um, now we know, of course, that the Soviets are going to get their last activation, which is 21st tanks. So they have softened up somewhat at the cost of losing some of their tank uh, attack ability, which is kind of great for the uh, Germans here because if we want to use a mobile attack, we can't use those uh, adjacent unit attack bonuses right with an assault. We'll actually have to just use um, what we have on the table here, which is, that's 8 now, so let's see, 5 plus 3 is 8, so that's 14. I would have 14 plus 14. What would that be? 28? 28 to, let's see what this value is. 7, 14, uh, 17, so 28 to 17. That would not be as good. Let's see, let's see 28. Yeah, so that would only be what? <laughs> I couldn't even get two to one odds attack, so I can't even do a straight up mobile attack and push them out of the way. So that's actually pretty good. I kind of was worried these guys would get pushed around, and now I'm realizing they're a little too strong to just be pushed around. So we're going to do the same attack again. We're just going to bring another um, general assault. This time I could actually maybe use artillery to my advantage. Uh, it looks like I just erased one of those values, of course. That's super. Super great, I think it was this one. So this guy is 6, 12, yeah, 17. I should have known that. And unfortunately, this guy's no longer 17 because of the armor loss. He now becomes an 11, 14. All right, so with uh, 7, 14, so we got 17 then. 17 defending, if we attack with everybody with an adjacent assault attacks, so that's going to be um, 17 plus 10 is 27, plus 14 is, um, let's see, 27 plus 14 is 37, 41, and that will be uh, 56. That should have been easy, right? Because I should have just known to subtract three from my last total. So 17 into 56, let's see, it's 17, 34, uh, 51. So yeah, again, I get three to one odds. Uh, yeah, and I can't really go higher than that, so that's going to be the just the way it is. <coughs> um, and now since we're using the 21st tanks, unfortunately we don't get the same kind of high ER ratings. We're going to have to maybe take some guy down. So we'll actually use this infantry as a 5. He's going to get that 6, so he's going to get a minus 1 uh, for ER. No, I'm sorry, he's going to get a plus 1 for ER ratings. He's going to get a minus one for a combined arms bonus because, again, he's attacking with armor and infantry on the same target. So that negates, but we got to do a combat coordination check. And I don't think they actually have their HQ. Yeah, they think they lost their HQ. So they actually don't, can't add anything to the combat coordination check. Um, and with a five, this is going to be tough because they get a minus one. So I got to roll four or less on this. Oh, and I roll a one. So they actually get the, uh, don't have to suffer any to penalties there. So this is a zero modifier on a three to one attack. It's clear terrain. Um, again, they can't do, they couldn't have done that reaction. Let's see, I have three, six, seven, eight. Oh, they could have done that. That guy could actually have come in. Um, but I didn't do that. It's really kind of too late and I should have done that. So it's three to one attack with a zero odds. Uh, it's an assault, so we're going to roll for the attack. Oh, uh, another seven is rolled. So I believe we just did that right. That's an attacker, defender one, uh, armor attrition. On the three to one, yeah, seven, one. Yeah, it's a attacker one, defender one. So this is actually okay. We can, we can take losses as the Soviets like that. That's actually okay. 
attacker one, uh, defender one. And it is armor attrition, but unfortunately they don't have any more armor attrition units, so we don't have to actually worry about those kind of requests or uh, dealing with those kind of issues. Okay, so that is actually the end of the turn. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on with the board. Sorry, the lamp is in the way because it's been providing all that wonderful light. So if we go down here to Salt Sea, we can kind of see that uh, the Germans have precariously held out. They're going to get three more victory points, but, you know, they're taking losses, two big step losses there, and losing points fast. So I don't know how long they're going to hold out. Um, Gordiche is almost the opposite. You can see the Soviets are actually holding out here very nicely, able to put another unit in. They're probably going to keep the third motorized and be able to take that city and get the victory points. It's kind of sad. And uh, down here, we're finally getting our act together, but it's, again, too little too late because we're not going to be able to really direct any forces up to Sydney uh, in order to capture those victory points. So uh, just to do a little bit of uh, upkeep here, I'm going to go ahead and give ourselves three VPs because we held on to the, um, to the VP hex here as the Germans. We're going to go ahead and move into the last turn. And uh, I'll go ahead and do all of the flipping, the accounting, and uh, there's no more reinforcements. We're totally done. So what the forces are on the board or what's on the board as we end the last turn, uh, we'll actually see if the Germans can um, pull it out. I think it's looking pretty good. I got to look at the VP totals, but um, we'll take a look and see how they're doing. And uh, onwards and upwards to the last turn, 17 p.m.